This film is brilliant. Uh, Anna, and it's super relevant for today. I feel like it's very timely with a lot of the themes that we see in the film. Uh, Mr. Brown, what drew you to adapt the play Freud's Last Session into a film? And how did you approach translating that to the screen? Well, you, you hit on it. It's the themes that, that drew me to it. And um, I think... I mean, it came to me about like six years ago or somewhere around then. Um, and I uh, I just immediately saw like the, our country, the world so polarized. And I just was like, I know it's C.S. Lewis and I know it's Freud, but it's just it feels like this conversation needs to happen and it needs to happen today. And um, and I've said it a few times, but like that was that long ago. And now today it feels like it's on steroids. And yeah, and I, I think it's more than ever that it feels relevant. So that that is really exciting. Um and as far as turning it into a, a movie from a stage play, I mean, that's just a, a question of having a cinematic approach to it and, and working that out. And it's um, I, I was blessed to have an incredible team. Uh, Luciana Righi was a production designer, Ben Smithard, uh, amazing cinematographer. And we just really tried to um, we, we tried to make it visual to try to bring in the inner lives to these men. So it wasn't just all philosophical talk you could you or psychological talk you could get into the characters and kind of understand where they were really coming from and matthew was and we were blessed with incredible actors but like with matthew to see him perform like with the ptsd and bring that to life i think that really opened up the play into a movie and allowed us to to you know know a little bit more about where c.s lewis was coming from i couldn't agree with you more i love those dream sequences and the flashbacks because i feel it gives us a real full picture of what these men are experiencing and matthew good uh fantastic job uh playing c.s lewis um and, and and like matthew brown said uh you did such a tremendous job of bringing those uh, elements of of his PTSD to life. And, and I almost wanted to give, you know, C.S. Lewis a hug in those scenes. Um, now, did you discover anything surprising or particularly intriguing about C.S. Lewis while researching uh, the role for this film? Yeah, there were a few things that I found, you know, fascinating, some of which I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't actually get into the film. One is that he was quite into flagellation when he was at, uh, when he was at uh, Oxford and school um but there's just little there's little things little things that were, that were like fascinated to me like is the fact he was very very funny and it's like when he when he when he coached at when he when he was a professor at college he would often i mean he smoked like an absolute train apparently we had pipes and cigarettes um which we which we didn't get too much into our film as well but apparently he used to just flick the ash on you know as on the floor not in a not on an ashtray at all, just onto the carpet of his room. So I think his I think that those those uh, students coming to his room would have been like, it stinks in here. Right. <laughs> My God, it's a tobacco factory. But no, I just I love playing the man. Really, it's like, and I have to do a lot of listening in this, which is a um, I suppose another very interesting. Um, thing to, that you have to go down you're like how much do i push as an actor blah 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 but and it's also i'm watching Anthony hopkins so it's pretty easy to be honest let's be honest. but um oh god what was my i lost my train of thought I, I mean, all i'm trying to do is get his humanity across and 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 through all the research that we did you know that's i think i did a fair a fair job of that oh you did a fantastic job of that sir a fantastic performance now oh, yes. Mr. Brown, uh, you touched on this a little bit, but can you discuss the thematic elements you wanted to emphasize in this film and why they resonate with today's audience? Well, I think it's just that it, I mean, well, okay, sure. The, but the worst, we're, we're look at the fact that this is starting on the eve of World War II, just that alone and how, how, you know, voices are being stifled, how uh, dictatorships are rising and, and tyranny is it's, it's, it's everywhere for them. And I think that today, uh, we're experiencing much the same in terms of the polarization of our society and in terms of the um, people are afraid to talk and they only want to, it's the loudest voices in the room that that get heard. And I think there's no no room for diplomacy. And um, I, I and I don't think there was then either. I know that it, that allowed allowed uh, some monster like Hitler to rise and, and then Stalin, you know, he's our ally, but he's no real friend either. So it was... I mean, very, very, very similar sort of geopolitical scenario uh, to what's happening today, like literally happening today. So 
it's scary. And you hope you're going to learn from past mistakes. But until people start talking and until we let, like Matthew said it a number of times, like, let's get the most intelligent people in the room actually having conversations. And and yeah. until that, you know, society wants to embrace that, I, I don't know. So I wanted to make this movie that maybe the audience would would have some conversation. You know, I, yeah, I, I, that's Mr. Brown. That, exactly right. I feel that like this film, I, I felt like you had you had made this ripping out the headlines that you saw like, you know, this past month. And, and here we are, cause it feels more relevant now than, than it probably did when you were, you were making the film, which is incredible. So it's um, lightning. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Good for you. Uh, look, Anthony Hopkins, he he's, he's brilliant in anything he does. He could read the phone book and, and probably win an Oscar for it. Um, how I was it working, right? How was it working with him uh, to bring this intense in intellectual debate between Freud and uh, Lewis to the screen? And can you talk about cultivating your chemistry with Anthony? Well, I mean, he, he's one of my, one of my childhood heroes. I'm sure he probably wouldn't want me to age him too much, but um, you know, and the, and there was an elephant in the room in the fact that he'd already played C.S. Lewis in, right. In Shadowlands and done a really remarkable job with it. So I, I was kind of afraid, but I did my research and I came together and, you know, and he really, I was a bit nervous if obviously, you know, when you meet your heroes and sometimes you should meet your heroes because he was just a joy. He's a joy, but he's still full of energy and vigor and brilliance. And, you know, he gave me an act. I got an acting masterclass inches away from him. You know, every day I had him on my, to myself. I mean, we shot the, the movie in, six weeks but for three of those weeks i was able to we knocked out half the film together and which is a real feat for someone who's in their 80s by the way sure. and so he's just really inspiring and i'm not what, what surprised me about working with is just how i was able to bring some levity to right. which is you know because it's not easy watching someone who's dying of cancer and and and, and also on drugs you know like right. uh, but, it was, but he does it just seamlessly and it's yeah I'll be thankful to Mr. Brown forever. Thank you guys so much for your time. The film is fantastic. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank so you very, very much. Have a lovely day.